Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video, I'm Git Good Guy, and today I'm highlighting another weapon that I think is blatantly underused in BF5, and it recently just got even better, pushing it into phenomenal territory, as you no doubt grasped from my title and thumbnail. I'm of course talking about the M1907 SF, and no, I know it's not as if nobody uses this, you see it from time to time, but I'll explain all of my reasoning throughout this video, so bear with me, and let's be honest, how often do you really get killed by this thing? Like seriously, because for me, and everyone I've asked, it's not that common an occurrence anymore. But before we get into this, let me just highlight what the hell is happening in this clip. This boy is levitating his way through World War II. I don't remember learning about that in my history classes. But anyway, what was the catalyst for this video? Well, I was already planning to produce a featurette for the M1907SF. It was a weapon that I enjoyed using a bit on a different account, and I knew that it offered a different playstyle to the accepted meta of BF5. That generally being mid-range gunfights, mid to long range scopes, and pretty passive gameplay. And anything that can actively combat the meta can be super valuable in the right hands. I'm always trying to bring you guys and girls new ways to approach situations and problems. But then the recent patch dropped and boom, we found out that the recoil buffer specialization hadn't been working on the M1907 and that a fix was being put in place. And my god, they created a face shredding assault laser beam. If you don't know, recoil buffer reduces the upwards recoil of a weapon. And that comes heavily into play as recoil is probably the main drawback of the M1907, especially when you consider that the vast majority of other weapons don't really have the kind of recoil that I think many of us expected from Battlefield 5. There are a lot of extremely steady weapons in this game, so using one that doesn't fit into that norm can be detrimental to your performance, but a fixed recoil buffer specialization goes some way towards remedying that. Now some say that recoil is controlled almost purely by the player, and thus using something like recoil buffer is a wasted selection. This often comes from extremely able players, and there is some value in what they're saying, for some players, but not for everyone, because almost all of the people who provide the information breaking down specialization selection and analysis are PC players, where recoil control with a mouse is in a whole different universe to controlling recoil with a stick, as you do on console. Also, those players, being highly skilled generally, don't necessarily cater for the average to below average player. My point being that, if you find a weapon to be super hard to aim with due to recoil, even if you're playing on PC, absolutely consider using recoil reducing specializations. At the end of the day, you don't have to adhere to what others think are the optimal choices based upon their own expectations. You should select whatever works for you. If it makes you feel any better, I'm sitting here with around a 3.6 KD, which is in the top 1%, which means I win the majority of my gunfights, and even I use recoil reducing specializations almost all of the time. It's about what works for you personally, and boy does the recoil buffer work. Now the M1907SF was used a decent amount when BF5 first came out. I got killed by it here and there, I saw a few videos about it, and all that good stuff. But now, it seems like 95% of assaults are using semi-auto rifles, and I totally understand why. That's not a criticism. It fits the basic way the game is designed, whether it be the average distance of engagements due to the map design, or the need to check areas with a scope, which the semi-autos pair well with. It just makes sense, and this relegated weapons such as the M1907 to the bottom of the pile. But listen to me, it's good. It's far better than I expected. Honestly, for me at least, as I've said, it's phenomenal. And as with any time I feel like this, it also means it'll be phenomenal for some of you out there. Not all of you, not even close in fact, but some of you, if you just give it another chance. But why? Well, there are multiple reasons. We'll open with the most obvious one, rate of fire. The M1907 fires at 770 rounds per minute. That's a lot of rounds, people, and that RPM beats everything else in the assault class by quite a distance. The closest to it is the STG, which fires at 600 RPM, whilst doing pretty much the same damage per bullet. This, to me, leaves the STG feeling like it has a really sluggish time to kill by comparison, especially when you consider the surprising range ability of the M1907, something we'll discuss soon and it even fires faster than all of the SMGs without them having light bolt attached, 
aside from the Suomi, which is level with it. The M1907 is actually more akin to a pretty fast firing LMG or MMG in terms of rate of fire comparisons that can be found within Battlefield 5. It's a pure shred machine, and yet it maintains that fantastic close quarters strength as well as range versatility that I quite simply didn't expect. I'm sure many of you will have noticed by now that some of the footage has shown me taking people down from some surprising distances for a weapon that fires this fast, and often while showing little signs of significant recoil. This is the beauty of the recoil buffer specialization paired with an understanding of recoil control. Yes, I do have a lot of experience of controlling weapons in FPS games, but it still shows that this is absolutely possible and something you can practice to achieve, even if you can't match it right now. And some of you will be equally good at controlling recoil, meaning you can throw this thing on next time you play and join me in M1907 slaying at close, mid and even sometimes long range. This is on console too, as I somewhat alluded to earlier, this is with thumbsticks. I've already seen what some PC players could do before the M1907 got its recoil buffer fix, before the weapon itself got buffed not too long ago as well, so now it could be downright scary if some of you more able mouse and keyboard users decide to pick it back up. After a buff and a fix, this is a far better version of the weapon than most of you will have used. Or you could be one of those players that can control recoil with a mouse regardless of the intensity of the recoil, in which case you could spec for hip fire and be even more versatile. Do you see my point? This weapon now gives you options that it didn't before the fix. It can now genuinely be used in a multitude of fashions and the gun itself is even better than when the game first released. I've been absolutely destroying with it. I already liked the gun and even I was genuinely genuinely taken back by how effective it is. If you ask me, it's hands down a better option at both close and long range than most SMGs in the medic class. I found it to be embarrassingly more potent, whether I decided to ADS or even sometimes hip fire, because the hip fire is still pretty good even without hip fire improving specializations. But I will say that putting said specializations on does of course take it to a whole new level where hip fire is concerned. However, the choice is yours as to how you want to set it up. For me, I go with recoil and ADS improving specializations due to the average engagement distance in BF5 and just how conditioned I am to ADS now. It's just how I play the game usually. Now speaking of ADS and bringing us back to ranged fights, this is incredibly important. It's the whole premise for me behind using the weapon and why I believe it's phenomenal. Using a gun such as this is so different to what most players are running that it can give you an advantage if you play to its strengths. This option will easily take down what most enemies are using if you stick to advantageous areas or you have a solid understanding of how to close in on those areas at the right times. It's not about camping or playing passively. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's about getting up in their faces and locking down zones. But you can't do that like a headless chicken. You have to time your moments. If you can do this, then you'll be golden. And thankfully, this is made all the more possible thanks to the unexpected rangeability of the M1907, which brings us full circle. It would be a whole lot harder to achieve success if it was entirely useless at anything outside close range, but it isn't. You can actually increase your ability at distance as well by using the select fire mechanic to switch to semi-auto fire mode. You will have seen and will see some more clips today of me taking advantage of this to drop people from quite some way out and probably leave them raging sometimes about how a weapon like the M1907 could possibly kill them from that distance. But I also had some success just burst firing as well. Semi-auto fire was only necessary for particularly distant distant targets, or those who were effectively using cover. The rest of the time, especially at mid-range, just firing a burst of two or three rounds was perfectly viable. So no, despite everything I've said to big the weapon up, it can't do what the semi-autos can do in terms of range, which is what most of you guys likely rely upon currently. But to reiterate and condense it down, you shred at close to medium range. You can actually use people using the meta against them if you can control the engagement distance. You can destroy people using semi-autos, LMGs, etc in areas where they don't expect you to have that much firepower. Which is the same reason why some people use the Tommy gun for the medic class. It's the total opposite of what most other people are utilizing. My big tip is that firing it around the height where you're hitting the chest but can also ding a headshot or two here and there is massively rewarding, but especially at longer ranges. Landing headshots with a weapon that fires this fast is absolutely brutal. I highly advise keeping that tactic in mind. Don't just always aim for the easy center mass. Aim up a little bit, control where your bullets are going, and take the enemy down super fast if you hit a few headshots. If not, you can ensure you're still hitting the upper chest. Now of course there is the downside
inside of the small magazine of just 21 rounds, which isn't a lot for such a fast firing weapon. So you need to be aware of position, where cover is, get used to reloading often etc etc, mitigate this weakness in order to take advantage of the weapon's strengths. Now I also like to pair the M1907 with dynamite, because well I almost always use dynamite, but in this instance it really feeds into the aggressive get up in their face playstyle that I advise, just to cause even more havoc. And now I should probably show you how I have my M1907 set up currently. So these are my specializations at the time of making this video. I go for quick aim at the top because I almost always do on every gun possible. It makes the weapon feel far more responsive to me and I've spec'd for ADS usage as a whole. I then have recoil buffer and custom stock in the middle to again double down on aiming down sight and lighten stock at the bottom for the very same reason. If you want to go for hip fire then use the full left side instead. Aside from at the bottom where you can choose between between the bayonet and lightened stock depending upon your personal preference. And so that's my rundown of the improved M1907SF and why I think it's phenomenal. If you haven't given it a try recently then absolutely make sure you do in order to see if you connect well with it. If not then at least you tried, but if you do you'll be glad you took a chance on it. So what do you think of the M1907SF and what's your go to assault weapon in BF5? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video today, if you did feel free to like, subscribe subscribe, turn on notifications and join my discord server. In the description and my pinned comment, here's the board of awesome for the epic people who support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes and love them all deeply and often. If you want to join them on the board of awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said, I'm Git Good Guy, and I'll see you next time, laters.